Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. <clears throat> Today we're gonna to talk about food before we get started though. Uh, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And what we're gonna be talking about is food. <clears throat> so I go to the gym uh, a lot. <laughs> And it worked out really hard with some great intensity. As you can tell, that's not bad for a 60-year-old dude who's been vegan for almost four decades. <clears throat> so, yes, you have to feed that muscle in order for it to grow and to gain strength and to gain size. So the big question that most people have, well, let's just go like the standard conversation goes. Then, dude, you're fit. Are you juicing? <laughs> Me? Nah, I'm not juicing. I'm just doing smoothies. Them. Oh, you must be using a lot of whey protein. Me. Nope, I've been vegan for 38 years. Well, then where do you get your protein? Food. <laughs> No, dude, like what foods do you eat? So that's the question we've got today. Jeff, what is it you actually eat in a day that you can maintain such low body fat and maintain such size even at 60 years of age after oh, 30, in my 39th year of eating nothing but plants? Well, <clears throat> short story is all the nutrients really come from plants except for vitamin B12 and vitamin K2, which are most both made by bacteria and, of course, vitamin D3, which we can get from the sun, but we can also get it from non-animal sources as well. And, of course, we sell that, and we're going to be relaunching it real soon as completely USDA-certified organic vitamin D3. And it's the first vitamin D3 that is pure vitamin D3, colocalciferol, from organic algae. Now we've made the entire product organic, every single ingredient in it, including the algae and including even the capsule is organic. So it'll be a truly 100% organic vegan D3 and uh, clinically proven published human studies showing it's effective at upregulating and bringing people into D3 sufficient status within just weeks. Okay, but let's get back to the food. How do we do this? So, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about and actually show the exact food that they're eating. You know, here's this, here's the beans I prepare, here's the stuff and all their food prepped and stuff like that. And rather than that, because, you know, that may not be to somebody's taste or whatever, I'm going to actually tell you how I approach food intake for the day. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So in the morning, pre-workout, I start out with a high fiber, high polyphenol approach. Now the highest foods and polyphenols are your dark greens, uh, cacao, uh, berries are really high in polyphenols. So mostly berries and polyphenols. So I make a big smoothie out of berries. I can do dragon fruit and, and strawberries and blueberries and blackberries and raspberries and bananas, which are technically a berry. So <clears throat> put all those polyphenol rich with some dark greens, kale, spinach, collards, lemna, <laughs> and that will be coming soon too. We're bringing back lemna still a couple months away. I'm sorry to say, but as soon as we can get it from the grower, we will have it back in stock and it's going to be even better than before providing 100% daily value of your vitamin B12 from a single scoop of lemna. That's pretty amazing. No longer a need to take supplemental vitamin B12. This will provide all the B12 for your needs in a single day, in a single serving, in a real whole food. Pretty cool. Okay, so... We'll put all those dark greens, all those polyphenol rich uh, uh, <clears throat> and antioxidant rich berries in a smoothie. That's what I'll have. Now, that gives me high amounts of fiber, 
uh, my fiber can have over 100%, my <laughs> shake or smoothie will have over 100% of the daily value of uh, fiber in a single smoothie. So I've got all my fiber covered today. Why I'm so keying in on fiber and polyphenols in the food intake that I do my first meal, it's because they feed the gut. Remember, we've basically fasted for the last eight hours while we're sleeping, probably even more, but unless you ate right before you went to bed. So up to 11 hours where you haven't had any food going through the digestive tract. This is a good place to clean out the digestive tract through fiber, but also to feed those. Because remember, you, your food hasn't been in there for a while, so the probiotics are really hungry. <laughs> feed your probiotics before you get started putting a lot of food in there you want to feed that. And the vast majority of things that they feed on are starches, polyphenols, and fibers, and oligosaccharides. Fruit and those will give you all of that. So this is, uh, this is a great place to get prebiotic fibers, get their prebiotic polyphenols, complex carbohydrates, feed your gut health. That will allow you to absorb more of the nutrients, more of that. If they're more active, if they're flourishing from this first very important meal, remember polyphenols are prebiotic, which means they not only feed the bacteria in your gut, but they actually, the gut bacteria will break down polyphenols into other metabolites that help you metabolize, stabilize blood glucose, help you uh, uh, absorb and utilize your carbohydrates better, help you um, regulate your lipids so they're not going into fat storage. So this is a great time to load up on polyphenols right before a workout because you're going to be triggering the body to get the maximum utilization out of what you're putting in. Okay, so I start out with a green tea and a chai tea. I mix green tea and chai tea together because green tea... Uh, and black tea, black tea is just green tea that's been fermented. That's why it turns black. So you got a fermented version and a non-fermented green and black tea. When you combine them together, they give you different types of polyphenols because one's fermented and one's in its whole food state. You're gonna get two different types of polyphenols that are actively working to help you with your metabolism. Fat burning, uh, glucose use, and, and uh, uh, fat regulation too as well. So then I have my smoothie, and now I've got all this fiber, all these polyphenols, all my bacteria in my gut are healthy and happy, and now they're ready to take on a great exercise. When you are exercising, you are going to be producing free radicals, free radicals or like a free radical oxygen, oxygen ROS or radical oxygen species. This ROS can be damaging to cells, so this high antioxidant in all these fruits uh, and in your green tea and your chai tea or your black tea, these will help you. Now, the reason I do chai tea instead of just plain black tea is chai tea has spices in it. Spices like cinnamon and nutmeg are even higher in antioxidant than blueberries and, and strawberries and things like this. So Typically, the foods that we eat are one level, and blueberries are right there, one of the top levels of antioxidants, but then you take spices, and they're next level. They're way high. So uh, the other way I can do a smoothie is I'm in the mood for chocolate. Cacao is another great, loaded with polyphenols and antioxidants. So then I will do nuts, which are also rich sources of polyphenols. Let's go ahead and list some sources there. This study actually uh, showed uh, that diets highest in polyphenols have a 30% reduction in mortality. So not only are they helping you with your metabolism, helping you control and have a lean body, helping your gut health, they're actually extending lifespan too as well. And as you can see in the list right on this sheet, that berries, grapes, uh, dark vegetables with lots of color. The more color there is to the vegetable or fruit, the greater the amounts of polyphenols in general. Green tea, black tea, chocolate, herbs and spices, which I just talked about, and nuts. So I can throw peanuts or almonds or, or walnuts into the smoothie with some cacao, with some blueberries, and there you have another powerful one. Throw some cinnamon in there because remember, cinnamon, really high in antioxidants. You're loading the body up with antioxidants, 
to antioxidation. You're creating a whole, you're breathing in a lot of oxygen to, to help your body burn fat because that oxygen helps beta oxidize the lipids, the fats. That oxidation is what breaks apart the fats and releases it as carbon dioxide, which is why you breathe heavy, and water, which is why you sweat. So work out with enough intensity that you're breathing hard. That is fat leaving your body because fat is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, or water and carbon dioxide. So when you break apart fat, you release that energy into the body and you breathe out that carbon dioxide and you sweat out or pee out that water, H2O. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, H2O, water, those form fats, carbs, protein. Protein just has another nitrogen molecule stuck onto it, but it all gets broken down that way and separated into this way. And that's why you breathe hard when you exercise because you're bringing in oxidation to oxidize that fat and break it apart. And then you're breathing out the CO2 and sweating out the water because that's the waste byproduct of breaking down fats, carbs, and even proteins. Okay, so this is really cool. You've got all these antioxidants in your body protecting you while you're working out. You've got these polyphenols and fiber priming your gut to say, okay, we're on fire now. We're hyperactive. Bring the food in and feed us. So the next meal is the afternoon meal. And this is where I load up on the proteins and fibers with seeds and beans and grains and nuts. I can take a, a couple of slices of Dave's uh, power bread, power seed bread, loaded with omegas, loaded with seeds and nuts and whole grains. Slather some nice almond butter on there, with slices of banana, some cinnamon for more antioxidants on there too. Now you've got like a 20, 25 gram of protein sandwich with all these uh, you know, high protein qualities to them, giving you that food. So I focus then on my afternoon on beans, grains, nuts, seeds, peas, legumes. All right, when you think about what is a seed, a seed is a compact uh, source of energy, all the highest amounts of protein. In the animal side of the food, what do you think is the highest source of protein? Eggs. Why? Because it's an entire chicken condensed down to an egg. That egg grows into a chicken. So it has a lot of condensed nutrition in it. Well, the same in the plant kingdom. You look at a plant and you have its seed. That seed grows into an entire plant. So you have a concentrated form of protein, concentrated form of starches and fibers, very rich in nutrients. So macronutrients especially, but also micronutrients. Okay, well, this will feed the body. So you've worked out, you've stressed the body, you said you need nutrients, you've primed your digestive tract with the polyphenols and that high fiber, high fruit, high berry, high dark greens in the morning. And now your body can absorb and utilize all those nutrients really well. Then in the evening, you want, I focus on beans, grains, and vegetables and starches like sweet potatoes and things like that. This will give us the energy to do the recovery and healing and repairing as we sleep at night. A good big stir fry with lots of vegetables. Those are anti, not only antioxidants, uh, but anti-cancer agents like cruciferous vegetables and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, and uh, cauliflower. These are great. They're low calories, so you're not going to be adding uh, to the fat stores while you sleep, but you're giving your body protective nutrients and you're giving your body nutrition so it can do the work of healing and repairing and recovering while you sleep. Now, if you think of that in these three different ways, prime your body with uh, berries and fruits and greens in the morning, feed your gut. Second, feed the body with the high nutrient dense uh, beans, greens, and grains, and seeds. Then vegetables towards the end, especially if you can do a big dark green salad, lots of dark greens. Again, remember the more dark and, and highly colored fruits, vegetables that you can get into your body, the better, because that's where all the rich nutrients are, micronutrients, macronutrients, fiber, polyphenols, phytonutrients, all of these rich sources that help your body heal and repair. That's why it, I'm at 60 years of age. I can have 17 inch arms pushing 450 pounds on the decline bench press machine, 
yeah, I can get, I can do that on a regular basis without injury because I am giving my body the nutrition. I am protecting it with high rates of polyphenols and antioxidants. And this is what allowing me to keep my skin youthful, to keep my body strong and to, to be eating such a rich diet. Now, most people say, well, well, what are your macros? I don't even care about them. I work out with intensity. I work out with consistency regularly. And then I focus on nutrient density. So work out with intensity, be consistent, and make sure you're nutrient dense in your food choices. That's why I focus on these three groups. And then you can just have fun with that because the polyphenols actually help you burn fat better. There's a great study, and I'll, I'll talk more about it. I'll do a whole episode on it called the Green Mediterranean Diet. If you want to look it up, just type in Google Green Mediterranean Diet Study Weight Loss. Oh, my. So they took people on a coaching, so a nutritional coaching that taught them how to eat to lose weight. Uh, group two was uh, they put them on the Mediterranean diet, which is mostly a whole food plant-based diet with some fish and a little bit of dairy. And then three, they just added green tea, a little bit more nuts and uh, lemon nut. And the ones in the green Mediterranean diet with the lemna and the green tea and the nuts, they lost two, two times as much body fat as those on the Mediterranean diet. Two times, three times more than those who got the actual coaching on how to lose weight. So this is incredible. This is the power of polyphenols. Look for those brightly colored fruits, especially berries, not seeds. I'll put this back up here so that you can see it. These berries, anything that's brightly colored, grapes, grapes, and then green black tea. Try to get those in on a daily basis if you can. Chocolate in its whole. Don't do the high sugar, high fat chocolate. Look for real cacao. You can get a, just a bag of uh, cacao powder and add it to your smoothies. Uh, you can take cacao powder and and peanut butter and uh, just roll them into a ball. <laughs> just That's all you did, two, two simple ingredients. Roll it into a ball, you can add a little maple syrup if you want it a little sweeter. And there you have a nice snack with three ingredients all in their whole food state. And you know, you've got good sources of uh, monounsaturated fats, you've got uh, healthy nuts in there, you've got, you can use different butters, you can use cashew butter or almond butter, things like this. So there's lots of ways you can approach this and you can be really flexible if you are focusing on these whole food plant-based, nutrient-rich and polyphenol-rich foods. You're going to protect your body. You're going to get better and quicker recovery and faster strength gains. You'll be able to maintain size when most people are losing through sarcopenia, what is called age-related. I don't believe it's age-related at all. I'm not losing muscle. I'm bigger than I was when I was in my 30s. I've gained muscle since I was in my 30s. And the reason being is because I'm giving it the proper nutrition. Nutrition is key. Working out regularly is key. And working out with intensity is important. And that's that simple. I can stay lean year round at 10%, around 10% body fat, look great on the beach and never count my macros, never count my calories because I'm choosing foods that help my body utilize those calories, utilize them correctly so they don't get stored. And then I couple them with workouts with fierce intensity so that uh, I can really get the strength gains, keep healthy and keep that free radical damage down. So my recovery time is faster and my health overall health is faster. I hope you enjoyed this. I wanted this to be more of a guideline uh, so that you could plug in the foods you like rather than me just showing you certain foods that I like and you go, eh, I don't like them. I don't like that one. I don't like this one. I just tell you how I approach eating foods focus on those polyphenols and fiber in the morning to prime your prime your gut. Focus on those uh, macronutrient dense foods, not seeds, greens, beans, and then focus in the evening on those uh, really high nutrient, micronutrient dense foods, um, starches, uh, starchy vegetables, green vegetables, having a big stir fry or a big salad. 
This is a great approach to it. It'll keep your calories uh, you'll feed the body when it's exercising. You'll protect the body when it needs it for prior to the exercise. And then you'll heal the body with the recovery in the evening. If you just follow that basic principle, keep to mostly whole food plant foods, you're going to have some great outcomes and you probably won't have to worry about body fat ever again. Um, you can even treat yourself to an occasional vegan donut or whatever out there. That's not occasionally what you're going to do that's going to cause much damage. It's what you're doing most of the time that matters. So enjoy your food, whatever it is. Try to focus on foods that feed your body through the right nutrients at the right times throughout the day to fit your workouts. And you're going to enjoy, enjoy the benefits of feeling good and looking good without having to stress out about what you're eating, counting calories, counting macros and all that stuff. Let the food do the work for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, give it a thumbs up, share it out there so more people can learn from this too as well and enjoy it. Remember, nutrient density, uh, consistency in your exercise and exercise with intensity. Oh, and for snacks, I almost forgot. We have brand new bars out there. You can save a child with every uh, bar you buy. You feed a hungry child and uh, a, um, a vegan meal. For every bar you buy, a child, a hungry child somewhere in the world will receive a vegan meal. So you can save a child. You can help an animal for every purchase. An animal will be fed and cared for on an animal sanctuary, every single bar. So you buy a box of 12, you're gonna be saving and helping uh, 12 children or 12 animals or planting trees. These are great, totally organic snack foods for in-between meals. If you got the munchies, you just munch on them. You're getting real whole food nutrients in this mostly. You're getting a completely organic and you're doing a good cause by uh, saving children, planting a tree, oops, <laughs> backwards, uh, and helping animals. Three great ways of buying these impact bars that go to Food for Life Global. They're the largest uh, food um, uh, donation service, feeding hungry children, helping animals with their sanctuaries, and even planting trees for the environment. Great cause, Food for Life Global. We give back to them. We fed over 10,000 people through your purchases. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for supporting Food for Life Global. We're proud to be the first ones out there selling uh, these impact bars with the cooperation of Food for Life Global. So you can buy them right on our website. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next week.